And we want to bring it up so she'll actually have a fuller upper lip when we're done. And also with the attachment of the frenum right near the papilla between eight and nine, we can actually close this gingival embrasure slightly because we eliminated those fibers from pulling every time she smiles. So we gave her a local injection, just used about a quarter of a carpel of lidocaine. I like to use these Optergates. These are available from Ivaclar. It's a non-latex, flexible cheek retractor. Open for me, real big. Has a stiff inner ring and then a stiff outer ring. It's non-latex, so we can utilize it with our latex allergy patients. How are you doing? You okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Be sure to tell me if you have any discomfort. We hardly used any anesthetic. Again, we want to make sure we have laser eye protection. And as long as I look through my loops, I have caps for an 810 wavelength diode laser. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use the diode in the cutting mode, somewhere in the 1.2 watts. Again, this is touch screen. We can either raise the wattage or lower the wattage depending on how the cut is being made. The diode laser is attracted to dark pigmentation like melanin. So a patient that has a lot of melanin, black American, Mediterranean, we typically would have lower wattage or lower energy used than someone that is light skinned or most Caucasians. Again, the goal is the least amount of energy to do the job. As I start making my cut, if I'm getting a lot of laser char, which is almost like a black deposit, a carbon deposit, then we're gonna turn down the energy. If it tends to drag, we'll just bump up the energy. Okay, let's go ahead and start. So we have high speed vacuum, and I like to just have a two by two gauze with a little bit of water, because we'll start to develop or build up debris on the, the tip, and we can just wipe it off with the two by two gauze. Okay, go ahead and turn it on. What I do is just start the cut. The nice thing about this is we're not gonna have any bleeding. I'm gonna take a still of that. And you can see we have minimal char yet it's cutting very efficiently. This is an end cutting laser. My goal with this is to go completely through the fiber until I hit periosteum. So you can see as I pull up on this lip, we're still getting some fiber pull laterally. Sometimes this final surgical site will be football shaped if the fibers are going more laterally. Sometimes it's just almost a, a round type post-operative site. Suction? Yeah. No, I need suction. Okay. So we're going to go right to periosteum. Notice no bleeding. For post-operative discomfort will be the injection sites only. Just a very light touch. If I do get a little bit of bleeding, if I hit a little artery, again, the diode laser is attracted to the hemoglobin, so I can just cauterize that bleeding point and move forward. How are you doing, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll go all the way to periosteum. Okay. All right, so we eliminated the fibrous attachment to the periosteum. Now what we're gonna do is just kind of clean this up, almost like festooning a denture. Clean up the lateral borders, the bulky attachment. We got a little bit of drag here, so I'm just gonna bump it up. Another 0.2 watts, I'm still only at 1.5 watts. 
What I'm doing is just cleaning up these borders. I'm going to go a little bit more laterally. You can see we still don't have any bleeding, hardly any laser char. We're going to go ahead and clean this up. Again, the Picasso Plus, the diode, is an end cutting laser. So we just use it almost like a radio surge or electro surge. Except that, again, the nice thing about it, it's very predictable. No post operative discomfort, no bleeding, and we can hit the periosteum. I'm just going to clean these fibers up a little bit. Getting a little bit more char than I would like, so I'm just going to turn it down. Go ahead and have hydrogen peroxide. Again, I can just take this 2x2 two two gauze with a little bit of water, embed the tip in the gauze, put my foot on the rheostat, and just wipe it clean. Where we have a little bit of that char, I'm just going to take some hydrogen peroxide. This is in an alternate tip. And we're just going to wipe that. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, again, I'm still going to remove. She's got a lot of fiber right here. Perfect. So again, notice no bleeding at all. I'm just festooning, removing the bulk, rounding the edges of the surgical site. Now, post-operative care for Erica would be just to keep that clean. I'll give her a little bit of chlorhexidine just to rinse after she eats. The nice thing about the diode, it seals the nerve endings as well as the capillaries. Sometimes spicy food can irritate that in the next couple days, but she'll do great. So again, we used about a quarter of a carpel of lidocaine, minimal anesthetic. And we're able to have a pretty significant phrenectomy with the amount of fibrous tissue was was in there. This will be great. Good. All right. So you can see how easy it is with the diode laser and doing a phrenectomy. And you saw that there was no bleeding, how very cleanly it removed tissue. And that's why we like to, to use it for fibroma removal. Um, certainly to trough tissue around crown preps so that we can eliminate packing cord. You know, the more bleeding we have, the actually the better it works because it's attracted to dark pigmentation, the hemoglobin. You know, I hope that was helpful. 
Again, the diode laser, and especially the Picasso Plus from AMD, is an instrument in my practice that would be very difficult, well, actually impossible, to live without.